Greetings, friends, and welcome to the Periodic Table of History. This is where we study history in four dimensions, and today's topic is going to be Paul's second missionary journey. And you can see the tracks there, starting at Antioch in Syria and going out in red, coming back in blue. We're covering the years 49 to 53 AD. This is meant as an age so that you can visually understand Acts 15 to 18, Paul's second missionary journey. It all starts right here at Antioch, so let's zoom in there. See, when we're zoomed in, we can see the mountain ranges around this area. We can see this as a great place for a city with access to water, access to trade. You're looking at the northeast corner of the Mediterranean, and we're in what we think of as Syria today. What's instructive is looking at the names here. Antioch of the Bible is still called Antakya today. You can see this word right here, Antakya. So you can see how the language changes over time. The story of Paul's second missionary journey starts with a dispute between Paul and Barnabas. Remember from the first missionary journey that John went with Paul and Barnabas, but John left. Well, that created some discussion between Paul and Barnabas, and so what ends up happening is Paul chooses Silas to be his partner, and Barnabas chooses John Mark. One missionary team becomes two missionary teams. Now, the Bible gives us great specificity as to where Paul was. So what I did is put down some hypothetical tracks so we could see where Paul may have gone. We know he started in Antioch, and we know he was born in Tarsus, which is up here in the left top of the screen, and we know he went to Derby, which is over the mountains. So let's pretend we're going in a time machine and we're going on a journey just like we would today, and we're going to follow in the footsteps of Paul according to what the Bible specifies. Well, let's get our perspective on history. We have our 6,000 years over here. And Adam is back here, Noah's life bar right here, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and then the flood. So you start seeing all these flood legends in this time era, about 2500 BC. That happens in the northern hemisphere, and it also happens in the southern hemisphere with Africa, Australia, and South America. So after the flood, we have the patriarchs down to Abraham, and then we start getting into great specificity when we get to the time of David and Solomon. Solomon marks the time period where ancient history and modern history come together very well. That's about in the 970s BC. So we have the history of Israel, the Maccabean Revolt. Then we have the Romans, Herods, Jesus, and then finally Paul. So keep this picture in the back of your mind as you study Acts, and just remember that the Bible is historically accurate, and it is connected all the way up into ancient history and then up into modern history. So let's start walking on our journey, and Paul may have used a boat and gone across here to Tarsus. He did that quite a bit, but this is just a different perspective of this area where Paul would have grown up. So let's just fly into here just as if we had a helicopter. So we zoom out just a bit, we can still see the Mediterranean here, and this is the southern coast of Turkey. These tracks mark where Paul may have passed these mountains. Remember, Paul established the churches over in Galilee just a few years earlier, so now he's doing a checkup. So we'll swing in here, and we're at about Acts 16.1, and that's at Derby. Somewhere around Derby or Lystra, Paul and Silas meet up with Timothy, who ends up being the Timothy of the Bible. Remember, Iconium was a place that Paul spent a lot of time on the first missionary journey. In Acts 16.6, 6, 
we are told that Paul went out to Phrygia. So Phrygia is a little bit more on the western part of Turkey, whereas Galatia is a little bit more in the center north of Turkey. So Acts 16.6, Paul went to Galatia, and remember, this whole area is the land of Galatia. We get an interesting detail in this story. It says that Paul and Silas and Timothy did not go to Bithynia. See, that's just a little bit north of here. The Black Sea is to our north. You can see it out there. It was somewhere in this region of Galatia that Paul, Silas, and Timothy decided to go west instead of going into Bithynia. And keep in mind, we are in the middle of Turkey right now. Now, if we turn on the tracks of the other disciples, we can see that the other disciples did go up here into Bithynia. If you've been walking with the Lord, you know that you think you're going to go one way, and then the Lord directs your path a different way. So God is really directing all these missionaries to exactly where they need to go. And that's the tracks of all the apostles. So this is Galatia, and this is Bithynia, where Paul did not go. He was headed that way, and then he went west. So let's get our perspective back in here. We're in the middle of Turkey, and now we turn west. Now we're headed towards Greece. The Black Sea is on our right, and the Mediterranean is on our left. You can see the detail of what Paul, Silas, and Timothy went through, just as far as having to travel. So here is the area of Mygia, and we're getting to the west side of Turkey now. So the missionaries come to Troas, and remember Troy is right to the east of here. You can read in Acts that this is where there was a vision of a man from Macedonia calling for help. So this is a port city. So we set out by boat and we go straight forth to Samothracia. Macedonia is a little bit north of Greece. So to get your perspective again, just think that we're a little bit north of what we think of as Greece. So now the missionaries land at Neapolis. Then we set off to Philippi. Remember, this was on the original first missionary journey. And there is a bit of drama right here. Some slave owners made money off a girl that was filled with a demon. And yes, that means slavery was alive and well at this time, which is about 50 AD. So Paul gets tired of all this drama. What is more, Jesus said, set the captives free. So Paul commands the demon out of the girl, and that makes the slave owners very angry with their predicament. Because remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. So they unjustly have Paul and Silas thrown into prison. This is where the idea of Paul and Silas singing in the jailhouse comes from, praising God in times of peril and turmoil. And then the earthquake comes. So you can read about that story in Acts. And just to remind you, a couple chapters of Acts is very easy to read. It has a very strong narrative, 
and you can pause the video at any time while you're reading the narrative. The missionaries next go to Amphipolis. See, now we are very squarely in Macedonia. Very close to Greece, though, now. So Paul, Silas, and Timothy are there at Apollonia. If you had a helicopter, this is what it would look like. And remember, Thessalonica was a place that Paul had problems before. He had the church split, and the old guard was very unfavorable towards Paul and Silas, though there were believers. Some of the attendees of the synagogues and many of the Gentiles believed that Jesus is the Messiah. But here in Thessalonica, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they have more problems. And this is one of my favorites, Berea. Berea was a place in Acts 17.10 that searched the scriptures daily. And if you look down here, the modern spelling of it is Veria. V-E-R-I-A, instead of Berea, with a B, B-E-R-E-A. So those differences are okay. They are just evolutions of the language. So now we zoomed out just a little bit. We are looking as if we are at the border between Macedonia and Greece. Silas stays there in Berea, and Timothy stays in Berea, but Paul goes on. Paul makes his way some way, probably by ship, down to Athens. And this is another hallmark event. You can see those beautiful mountains around Athens. We have a shift in the dynamic of Paul as he becomes Greek-centric instead of jewish centric and he sees all the idolatry that's in greece remember he has had trouble before people worshiping zeus and hermes but if you were to take a trip to athens you can still go to areopagus which is mars hill and that's the very place where Paul stood on and gave his speech about the unknown God. See, just FYI, this is just as tangible today as it was 2,000 years ago. So we change our perspective just a bit, and then we make our way through the city, just like Paul did, and we're going to go on our way to Corinth. We hear about that in the letters in the New Testament. It's pretty close to Athens. But I think of Corinth as a gateway between the East and the West. And the reason for that is because if we're looking at the city of Corinth, we can see on our right side, that's very close to Rome. And on our left side, that's very close to Turkey. So from this city, you can create a distribution hub, kind of like a Pony Express, and you can send letters out to the west, out to Rome, and you can send letters conversely to the east, out to Turkey. So this is a very good gateway for trade and communication. Well, remember Silas and Timothy, 
they were left in Berea. Well, now they came from the land of Macedonia, and they're here with Paul in Greece in the city of Corinth. This is where 2 Thessalonians was written. The Bible actually specifies that Paul was here one year and six months. So this must have been a very fertile place where Paul thought he could spread the gospel. Just to the south of Corinth is the land of Achaia. It is where Gallio is the proconsul. So he's sitting in the judgment seat when the Jews give some accusations against Paul, trying to get him in trouble. He doesn't really want to get involved with religious matters. It's very hard to prove a belief one way or another, so he figures, why bother? So still in Acts, the missionaries leave from King Crea, and now we are here on the edge of Greece, going towards Turkey. If you're by boat, you have to dodge a lot of these islands. But remember, a lot of missionaries are going back and forth in this area. Paul goes back to Ephesus, Acts 18, 19. So Ephesus is there on the west coast of Turkey. And it is where John spent a lot of his life and a lot of his ministry. Remember Patmos right here, which is off of Turkey. That is where John wrote Revelations. Not far from Ephesus. Paul really wanted to get back to Jerusalem, so he bounces off from the southern coast of Turkey. We can see Cyprus here in the distance, and we see Israel way off in the distance. So Paul goes across the Mediterranean Sea as fast as he can and goes to Caesarea. Caesarea is a huge shipping hub. So now Paul goes to Jerusalem, meets his goal, and then he goes back to Antioch. And that's about 52 AD. So wow, we are back home. I mean, what does it feel like to go on an adventure like that? I think one of the feelings that I get when I read Acts is the realism of it. It's like a ship log. And then when the Holy Spirit resides in you, you think you're going one direction but then the Holy Spirit guides you a different direction. So we have the expression, if the creek doesn't rise and the Lord doesn't tarry, then I'll be there. We plan our footsteps, but God really directs our path. And if you've walked with the Holy Spirit, you know exactly what I mean. That second missionary journey solidified Christianity, where Paul was trying to make sure false doctrine didn't creep into the church. We can take a look at Paul's first missionary journey compared to the second. The first missionary journey had a lot smaller circle to it, but laid the foundation of everything that we see in the second missionary journey. But you can see the circle now not just encompassing Turkey and Syria, but now it's going all the way over to Greece. And we'll see that expand more as Paul's faith expands even more on the third missionary journey. Well, I hope you enjoyed going on our time machine adventure. And this may just inspire you to take a flight over to Syria, Turkey, and Greece to check this area out. Many people go up to Mars Hill today just to see the very place where Paul started preaching to the Gentiles and giving his message of repentance from idolatry and turning to the true living God. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. May the paths rise up to meet your feet. And remember, in two days, tomorrow will be yesterday. 
So do the best you can today. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.